the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time the disciples said to Jesus, Oh, now that you are speaking plainly, not in a figure, now we know that you know all things and need none to question you. By this we believe that you come from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? The hour is coming, indeed it has come, when you will be scattered, every man to his home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said this to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, if there was ever a time in our lives, it is now to hear these words where he says, In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer, and the reason is because Jesus has overcome the world. And the sentence just before that gives us another beautiful leg to this mystery. I have said this to you, in other words, that I am going to leave you and go to the Father, that in me you may have peace. So he's saying that when Jesus, when he himself goes, there will be peace. It just seems odd. Because we would all like to think that if Jesus was with us physically every day, that we would have peace all the time. We would live in kind of a glorified bubble. Well, we will, but not on this earth where there are trials and tribulations and things like bits flying into your eye. So where does this all come, or where does this all come together? It comes together when we believe. And every trial and tribulation is an opportunity for us to ask ourselves, am I still believing? Am I still believing? So every trial and tribulation that comes, it's a, a way of God saying to us, do you still believe in me? Because if you do, no matter what the trial and tribulation, there will be peace. And in a sense, we notice from Gethsemane to the cross, there seemed to be a kind of peace in Jesus. An acceptance through the pain and suffering, but there was a kind of peace that was different from before when he was with his disciples and they were living in the world and doing all these things. But there came a part, and it would seem from the time of Gethsemane, when he actually handed over and said, well, I have no power now on earth. I'm only going to rely on the power of you, God the Father. And that's the point where everything changed for Jesus. Passion death, yes, short. Resurrection, a little longer. Ascension, forever. So he says, says to us today, that in you, if I go, you have your trials and tribulations, but then you will have your peace. Not peace in this world, but be, you will have some, actually, we will have some kind of peace in this world, knowing that our eternal reward awaits us. That's what we are called to believe in. And in the first reading that you didn't hear, because we're trying to keep these reflections short, it was the story about Paul going to, to um, Ephesus. And he sees there people who were baptized, but only with John's baptism. They had wanted to change their lives. That's one part of it. And Paul brought them 
baptism of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost for them. That's what changed them. It's not enough just for us to have the intention to be good, but to have and believe and live in the Holy Spirit. That's what real belief is about. And that's why as we work our way as a parish with our new logo, trying to find new ways to revitalize our parish in a real, relevant way so we can be ready for whatever happens after lockdown, whatever economic situation, whatever spiritual situation we are in as a family and as our world is in, will we still believe? And that's what he's saying, be of good cheer. Because all that is happening to us has happened before in some way or other. It's just that it's our first time. Let us believe. Let's prepare ourselves for Pentecost. So that we know that what we are given at Pentecost will be the greatest gift a human being can be given. The gift of life. Amen.